didn't have the money that we needed by any means when we started. And so it was kind of figured out as we went along, which was a huge risk and really scary, probably the most intense year of our entire lives. But we really believed in this place and knew that it had a lot of potential and just put everything into it. My name's Sarah Combs, I'm 36. And I'm Rich Combs, I'm 37. And we bought an abandoned inn for 615,000 and turned it into a desert oasis. We love offering this as a place where people have the time to really think about what they love and what they want to do, what their lives, what they truly enjoy, and get a quiet moment to reflect on everything. Before we started the Joshua Tree House, we were both web designers. We're designers by nature. We went to art school, but it was just a lot of time on our computers. We were just really craving working with our hands again, and we were looking for a creative retreat from San Francisco at the time. I think we were riding bikes around and started talking about, ah, oh, we kind of don't want to go back to work on Monday. Should we just? quit now, then we'll have to figure it out as we go and that'll be the motivation that we need. So we just did it. We first discovered the Tucson property just online. We asked our real estate agent to come look at it. He FaceTimed us throughout the whole building. We were just so in love with the place. It was just like nothing else that we've ever seen before. Straight out of a dream. Yeah. Our minds were blown, for sure. We put in an offer and they came back to us and they said they would go with our offer of a three-month escrow as long as we also gave them a copy of our book. So we said, yeah, we can <laughs> do that, yeah. for sure. When we first got to the property, it was beautiful and had incredible bones, but it had been gutted and needed a lot of repairs. A lot of the plantings outside were either overgrown or dead. The roofs had a lot of leaks, which was a really big thing that we had to fix. There was flooring missing, some walls were missing. Kitchens were missing a lot of things were missing. <laughs> so out of pocket renovations cost around $500,000. That we basically utilized our credit cards. We maxed them all out. We also borrowed a lot of money from friends and family. Uh, luckily we had a really great support system around us that helped us get through that. And it was a really rough time. We didn't have the money that we needed by any means when we started. And so it was kind of figured out as we went along, which was a huge risk and really scary, probably the most intense year of our entire lives. But we really believed in this place and knew that it had a lot of potential and just put everything into it. We like working with a lot of the natural materials around us, the colors of the desert, the textures that you could find here. So when we first started designing, we actually took a fan deck of paint colors and laid it out in the sand and then held it up to cacti so that we could create as much of a connection as possible. When you first enter the inn, you'll see the open living room with a sunken area in the middle. This is where our guests can watch movies, listen to music, relax for a little while. As you come around towards the kitchen, you'll find anything you need to make a great meal. 
Sometimes it's our guests cooking in here. Sometimes it's a private chef, depending on what you want. We also have a dining room with a ceramics pantry of anything that you would need for plating your meal. As you go down the hallway from the dining room, there is a staircase that goes upstairs to a yoga room. Tucson has such a great creative community and we really want to incorporate as many artists or makers as possible from here. You really get to be connected with the community and share that with your guests so that in turn, when they come stay, that's also positively impacting the people around them. And ultimately now, it's so much fun to tell all of our guests where everything's from and they can go check out this artist and this creator and it makes coming to Tucson that much more special. The hot spring is a hot tub that's in the style of a hot spring surrounded by palm trees. Next to that, there's an olive grove of olive trees that were planted by the original builder. This is one of the most quiet and peaceful spots on the property. To the other side, there's an enclosed courtyard with a fountain, a canyon pool, which was also built by the original builder. It's like nothing we had ever seen before. You feel like you're swimming in an actual canyon. The original builder of this place, Merv Larson, he passed actual canyon rocks in Arizona and then created this pool out of those castings. That's next to the fire pit, which is a communal space for people to gather, have a fire, maybe make some s'mores, and look at the stars. Living in the desert is not convenient by any means. You have extreme heat, and then you also have, in the wintertime it gets pretty cold. The roofs are constantly expanding and contracting, which every year basically means that there's a new leak. So you're always trying to be as proactive as possible for that. You're also living with a lot of wildlife. There could be various animals that could come in, like we've had a roadrunner in one of our rooms once. And every season brings something new. So right now we're in monsoon season where we get more rain and that brings out the most beautiful sunsets we've ever seen. Other times of year, the cactus is blooming and it's perfect hiking weather. And it's just really awesome to feel those cycles and be part of them, see the full moon rise up from the horizon and set in the Milky Way almost every night. It's, it's really special. A lot of people are constantly talking about passive income and people think that like this is potentially like a passive route. It's a, it's a full-time job plus a few other jobs. It's not as easy as it sometimes seems on the internet. Overall, I feel like the biggest impact that we can make is having our guests come be immersed in nature, reconnect with it, and then in turn care more for it. Our goal is to eventually be just completely self-sufficient and have our own solar panels and rainwater harvesting and just being able to use, I guess, the grid as kind of a backup for us. Eventually, we'd love to have a couple more inns throughout the Southwest. But right now, we are working on our personal home and our personal lives and just enjoying everything that we get to experience every day.